In 2016, we started our own apiary. We decided uh, to join the local beekeeping group. We set some Langstroth uh, eight frame hives out. And then uh, a couple months later, we found out that a neighbor of ours was moving and was going to have to sell their bees. It was a, it was a immediate move. And so we went ahead and bought theirs, and that was a 10 frame. And from there, we, we really let our apiary grow. We started out with the two hives that turned into three, that then turned into 12, that then turned into 20. And throughout all that, we noticed that the supers were getting heavier each year, um, which is great as a beekeeper, but really bad on your back. And we're trying to figure out how to, you know, lessen the amount of strain that we're putting on ourselves as we're lifting and lifting boxes. Well, obviously the honey. Everybody loves honey. But there's also some other things that a lot of people don't talk about. I love learning. And there's so much you can learn about bees. Like, I feel like every day there's something else that I learn. So for me, that's a big one. Um, also, I get to spend a lot of time with my husband. So it's one, one hobby that we do together, so it's nice. Some of the things that we wanted to do uh, with our apiary is really help out the, the neighbors, uh, their, their gardens, the local farmers with pollination. And just having our bees in our own backyard with them flying up to, you know, three to five miles really covers a lot of space and I think really is beneficial for everybody. Um, in our community, there's a lot of farm markets. We still do the, uh, the honor system there. I mean, it's, it's really, um, nice out here being able to have everybody plant something in their backyard and have our bees provide the pollination for them at no cost to them. If you're going to keep bees, you're going to get stung. Probably not a lot. Hopefully not a lot, especially if you're dressed appropriately, but it does happen. Um, also boxes get heavy. I, I have a bad back. I've had a bad back for years. Um, I'm, I'm still pretty strong. I like to stay in shape. Yeah. When you're lifting, 50 plus pound boxes, you know, from waist high and up or more, it gets rough, especially if you're doing it, a, you know, a full day or more. So going back to, uh, to my, my back problems, that's one of the reasons that we're building this new long length drop hive. I'm super excited about it. So shouldn't have to bend over anymore, really. Shouldn't have to be, you know, picking up heavy boxes. So that should help hopefully. Um, but also we were on the path to master beekeeper for our state and hopefully beyond as well. But, um, part of that isn't just kind of, you know, a check the box. We don't want to just get master beekeeper and, and then that's it. Like what next? So what we really want to do is learn about all the different styles of hives and different management techniques. In fact, last year, we got a warre hive. It's like it's supposed to resemble more of a, a natural tree. You know, it's a little bit smaller. Boxes are a little bit lighter. So that's been nice. And it also has observation windows, which is really cool. Um, this year, we're considering building a long warre hive. I've never seen it before, but it's something we've been throwing around. In our last video, we, we took you through how to build it. And how we built ours and some of the modifications we made. The next step to that is really preparing the hive for the bees. We already have the hive, but to, to really set us up for success, what you have to do is a couple extra steps before you put the beehive in the yard and before you can put bees in it. The beehive needs to be uh, weatherproof so that your wood doesn't just deteriorate over the year. It needs to be stable and it needs to be set up in a, a more natural style environment for the bees. Um, 
that not saying that just a straight wooden hive is not a natural environment because bees do go into the trees, but how does the cavity form in the tree? Well, you have, you know, termites, woodpeckers, and then lightning strikes. Well, termites and woodpeckers, we don't really want getting at our hive. But lightning strikes, we can simulate that. And what we do is we will go ahead and torch the inside of the hive. And what we use is your basic weed torch uh, hooks up to a propane tank. And we'll just ch lightly char the inside of the hive. We won't, we won't burn it like uh, to crisps, but we will lightly char it on the inside, giving it an aroma of a tree that's been struck by lightning and also a, a texture for the bees to walk on. When they're walking on it, it's not just wood, it's a little charred wood. It's, it also seals the inside because if you burn wood, that, that charring will seal it so that the wood doesn't really need anything on the inside. If moisture gets on it, it'll kind of wick off. In our past you know, a couple of years of beekeeping, that does seem to help. Uh, they, they do tend to, to stay longer, or just, they do tend to stay in those hives. We also add tongue oil to the outside of the hive, and that tongue oil just kind of seals all of the, the nooks and crannies of the wood. It soaks into the wood, really, and it, and it weatherproofs the hive. From the you know the rain and hurricanes that we get here in North Carolina. Now the tongue oil we use is not the 100% tongue oil. This is the essentially quick dry tongue oil. It has a bunch of little additives, and when we put it on there, what it's doing is it's sealing the outside of the hive so that you know it's protecting it from moisture. It's protecting it uh, from splitting essentially and that uh, throughout the year wood will compress and expand but this will help it uh, not do it excessively since it's sealed we use that and it's super easy you just put it on a rag you wipe it up and down the hive it typically will not darken the color of your wood but it will make the the knots on the wood really pop out and look really nice so Part of our apiary is we want to kind of increase the aesthetic look about it. Um, we want to make it aesthetically pleasing and also have a bunch of different hives out there. So each hive you walk by, you can go ooh and ah. Right now we have some hives out there that had good ideas, but they were more like experimental builds. And we want to go ahead and kind of tie off the knot there and pick what worked in the first couple of years and go with that and make it look really nice. For the tongue oil, if you're applying your tongue oil, it's a good idea to not just, and the same goes with the burning, don't just burn the inside and then throw bees in. Don't just put tongue oil on the outside of your hive and then put bees in. The whole point of burning the inside is to make the bees comfortable with what they're doing. Uh, which is moving in and living in your domicile. Um, tongue oiling the outside is weatherproofing it, but it's putting off vapors. Same with the burning of the wood. It puts off that, that charcoal kind of smell. The, the tongue oil will put off uh, just a chemical sort of oily smell to it. And if you do that and you put bees in, they're going to be uncomfortable in their domicile. And what we do is we'll wait up to a week, sometimes two weeks, after preparing the hive. That way, all of those fumes can evaporate. And anything that's left is very minimal. And it should not make the bees too uncomfortable. And in fact, most of the time when we do this, 99%, the bees stay in there. We talked about it and decided an accent color would be nice, but we purposely didn't tongue oil the legs of the hive. We decided to paint those so that the, the legs will be completely weatherproof. We won't have to worry about them rotting out, you know, with the contact with the ground. 
we're, we're excited. We think it's going to look really cool. And it's going to be a different, different look in the apiary because most of what we have are Langstroth hives and then the one worry hive. This is a lot, just a little different dimension. Thank you for watching. Let us know in the comments below if you have a long Langstroth hive or are planning to build one. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and tell all your friends. If you'd like to learn more about bees or our apiary, you can visit our website at www.rascalapiary.com. We also have an online store there where we sell beekeeping shirts, decor, and more. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.